Bueno, primero muy muy buenas tardes. Well, first of all, good afternoon to everybody. A todos los presentes, directivos, to all of you, to all of the board members and all of Global Partnership supporters. Este día importante donde uh, this important day where we're celebrating 20 years of hard work creating development and opportunities and economic growth for uh, for people in my country uh, in the region of Chanchamaya coffee farmers in the Peruvian region of Chanchamaya. My name is Frank Fuentes Valencia. I'm the general uh, manager for Credit Florida, a uh, savings loan cooperative. And the institution I work for is an organization made up of coffee farmers where the world's finest coffee is produced. Now, the relationship that uh, was born between Global Partnerships and Credit Florida started in 2009. Uh, because as it turns out, in Peru, in the city of Arequipa, there was an event that I'm sure you know very well, Foro Meek. And I remember that uh, two um, uh, officers of Global Partnerships came down. And at the time, I felt, uh, I felt like I was a very small cog in a wheel just trying to get by with our cooperative. Because there was a great need in the coffee sector at the time. There was no financing, uh, there was no specialized financing available specifically for agricultural projects. So when we had our first contact, I thought this was going to be a cold relationship uh, with, uh, with these folks because I didn't know them very well. And we were talking a lot about finance and risk. Uh, it, but not about the people behind all of this. Uh, later on, I had the pleasant surprise of realizing that there was a word that brought us together. It's a word that we use a lot in the cooperative in culture in Peru. Solidarity. Why solidarity? Because at the end of the day, Global Partnership took ownership of Credit Florida's mission, which was to offer uh, financial services and technical assistance to coffee farmers to support their economic development and their social development, not only for families but for communities in their entirety. And we are still very closely united on that point. And I think I can illustrate this better for you by telling you a couple of stories that I hope will serve as a good illustration of collaboration and success through collaboration. First, I'm going to tell you a story about a friend of mine. His name is Jeronimo Riesle. Several of you from Global Partnerships know him, too. Jeronimo is a coffee farmer. He lives at the top of a hill. And in order to get to Jeronimo's house, you have to go through a steep ravine with a creek running through the middle. And it's a terrible road to get there. You have to be pretty brave to get into a car and try to drive this road. In the rainy season, I don't think anybody but Jeronimo can get to his house. Once you get to his house, you'll see a stable. It's a, it's a rustic uh, country stable and a very rustic house. You can see it on the screen. This is a house that Jeronimo built with his own two hands. And next to it is his stable where he has eight uh, healthy cows and uh, three horses. He really loves horses. And out in the back of the house you're looking at, he keeps a, an orchard where he grows several tropical fruits to feed his family and to support his household. He has a very happy life. And, and uh, it's contagious. I feel his happiness when I spend time with him. He says that his house is the window to the sky. I'll tell you why. When he gets to his house, 
It's always misty. And uh, it's always happy, just as in paradise. There's no lack of food, there's no lack of joy. Now, out in front of his house, about 700 meters further down, he's got a, a coffee farm. And I remember very well when he started working with us back in 2004. He asked for his first loan. Y él comienza a trabajar, a renovar and sus plantaciones. he started working on Le his coffee bien. plantations and uh, rehabilitating uh, them. And he did very well, and he was able to make enough money para a a su to pay for tiempo, uh, treatment for Freda his y wife. Y At the time, it was just him and his wife, Freda. El, el, el tratamiento, yo creo que era and the treatment that he was able to no, uh, pay for para was para in order to achieve an impossible dream what he, his dream, their dream, was to be able to be parents. Hieronymo was 40 by now, and he had dismissed the idea, he had given up on the notion of being able to be parent. But uh, sometimes uh, you don't understand what happens, but miracles do happen. So uh, with the fertility treatment he was able to pay for for his wife, he was able to achieve this goal of being a parent and having his only child. And this is a story that I don't mind telling you over and over again because he tells me this story every year. He's very proud of it. Now, the second important life goal that he set for himself was... Uh, based on his first loan, he said, look, Frank, I'm currently growing 18 bags of coffee in an eight-hectare farm. To give you an idea, a hectare is 10,000 square meters, so at 80,000 square meters, he was only getting 18 bags of coffee. And coffee is currently uh, worth $190 a bag. So what he did uh, was he was basically doing subsistence farming. So he set a goal of producing more than 100 bags, but not on eight hectares, but on four. And he achieved this goal in 2011. I remember it like it was yesterday. We had a couple of beers together to celebrate it because he had made his goal, uh, which he really, uh, which was something that was very difficult for him. Now after that, he ended up uh, having investments of around $29,000 in his farm, uh, in improving his home, expanding his farm. And now currently, Jeronimo is going through very, very difficult times. You must know that Peru has been struck by a, a blight uh, in the coffee sector. Uh, which is uh, caused by leaf blight and also by climate change, uh, which has uh, created the, the conditions for this blight to spread. Now, uh, he's lost uh, his $29,000 uh, investment. He doesn't have a functioning farm at this point due to, the, uh, due to the leaf rust blight, but he has a lot of enthusiasm. He has uh, something that a lot of us don't have. He has happiness in his life. He told me, Frank, look, maybe I fall down, but I'm going to get up again. No, I think that uh, some of us, of course, have joy in our lives like Hieronimo, but not everybody. But he said to me, this is another challenge, and I'm going to have to get up again. So he's got his family, he's got his cooperative, which he's also served as president of. And in that case, I was working for him as a manager. Uh, in order to achieve the goals that he set out. Now, I want to turn to another story, too. This is a story that's a little... It's more a story of entrepreneurship and the motivation uh, of a woman. 
y también muy aleccionador porque This is a, a story that has a lot of lessons to offer as well. Because I'm going to tell you the story of Nerida, but in order to understand Nerida's story, you really have to know about her father. Her father's name is Antonio Gutierrez. Antonio uh, moved from the Andahuaylas region in the Sierra in Peru when he was 13 years old uh, to Uh, to our region to work picking coffee. And he continued to work until he became an adult. And when he had been working for 15 years, they made him a foreman uh, on a big farm uh, that belonged to a, a well-known landowner in the Chachamaya region. Now, this landowner appreciated his work very much and gave him a 50 hectare farm to work for himself in the Jose Olaya area. And he was very happy. He said, okay, now I've got something for myself. This is one of my goals. And he went to Jose Alaya and started working. He met a woman, a beautiful woman from the area, fell in love and got married. He lived with her for 14 years. And they had five boys together. This is an important number. Remember that number, five boys. Well, uh, Antonio had, a, had to face tragedy because his wife suffered a snake bite and because of the lack of access uh, and good roads, uh, she died of the snake bite after their 14-year marriage. But he still had his kids. Antonio had his five boys and they continued to work. But as you, as you know, in the 80s in Peru, Uh, uh, terrorism became a serious problem in the country and the uh, central jungle region got the worst of it. You can see the picture here. The Shining Path terrorist organization would go to different places in the central jungle region and recruit kids from families and ask for their support for their internal armed conflict. Uh, to spread chaos. Now, Antonio refused to do this. He said, no, I'm not having any part of this. Uh, I trust in the, the army, and the army will protect me. Well, this criminal organization, Shining Path, came one Sunday down to his house to take all of his boys away, but they only took away four of them because the youngest had gone to do some errands uh, down in, in town. They took him down to the town square and murdered them in front of their father. It's one thing to practice giving a speech, but I get up here. But as I was saying, all that was left to him was his eldest son. And uh, with one son, that wasn't enough uh, to be able to work the farm. But he managed to stand up again. After that, in 1996, he tried to uh, get back everything that he had lost at his farm. But by this time, after all the experiences he had been through, he had taken his family down to La Merced, to Chanchamayo, to live. And he saw that uh, he was going to have to, uh, he was going to have to do something to recover his farm. And he said to his five daughters, because he had gotten married a second time, and this, in his second marriage, he also had five children but all girls this time. So he turned around and said, okay, kids, honey, we're going back to the farm because we've got to get this farm running again. So they got to work. And, uh, with the, uh, the backing of the Credit Florida Cooperative back in 2004. And they made it. They, were, they became very important uh, farmers in the area. Now, Nerida, the main character of the story, stopped going to school when she was uh, 14, and then when she was 16, and she was working on the forum, she uh, met Orlando Ortega, who would be her future husband. You can see him in the picture. 
they got married and Antonio her father gave them four and a half hectares to work and now this is my favorite part of the story because they had greater ambitions than that now Merida had seen how Credit Florida had helped her father with financing so they decided to come down to Credit Florida knock on the door and uh, Credit Florida gave them a 5,000 soul loan uh, and they bought four and a half more hectares from her father they paid off their loan within a year I couldn't believe it but one time when I went down with the uh, technical assistance team to do a visit I realized that uh, they were not doing that great the family was great but the coffee farm was not doing that well because it was really subsistence farming what they were doing so I suggested to them that we would give them a loan uh, of the equivalent of $10,000 to work uh, one hectare in 2009 and then another one the next year uh, with another $10,000 credit. Uh, but there was going to be technical assistance with the loan and technology transfer. So they agreed. But what I really want to point out about this is that Nerida, she was always the first one to show up for training. She was the first one taking notes. She was the one that uh, motivated others. She was, uh, she was always there first for breakfast, for the training. And she did it. She, uh, she achieved her goal with her farm. You can see it in the pictures. It's a lovely farm. And we all thought, okay, she'll now make good income from her coffee, which she did, but that's not all she did. She didn't stop there. She took that te technology, took ownership of it, and then she would go around to uh, the neighboring farms and she would say, look, I'll put in one hectare of coffee for you. How much? 6,000 soles. Okay, good. Uh, now you can put in a hectare of coffee in 12 months. So she would make 6,000 soles in 12 months. Currently, she's got a portfolio of... Uh, six uh, customers per year and she's making 30,000 soles a year on top of what she makes from her coffee. She's, uh, she's earning about 5,000 uh, soles gross from the coffee but uh, uh, but on top of that she's making the additional 30,000 from the technical assistance she's uh, giving to her neighbors. And she's been able to support her kids and her kids' uh, education. If you see there, her eldest son, she's been able to send him to Lima so that he can attend school. What's the most important about the two stories that I'm telling you is that none of this would have been possible if it weren't for people like all of you and if it weren't for global partnerships so I just want to say uh, thank you to all of you for paying attention to me and Foromic back in 2009. I want to express my profound gratitude for all of this because Credit Florida is the cooperative that I manage and I haven't talked about numbers here because that's, that's my field, that's what I do. Uh, what's most important about this is this was uh, very important for me to meet you face to face because like I told you at the beginning at the beginning I thought that this was going to be a cold relationship simply because we know this we know what this is this comes to Peru but that's cold this is a cold thing this is like math this, uh, this doesn't bring results. But we, what we don't see is what's behind that. Yeah, I'm looking at the front. I see Benjamin Franklin. But he's not responsible for this. It's you. It's you. And I want to tell you, this is the first time I've ever come to the United States. I had a, a, an idea, a, a very mistaken idea 
uh, of all these folks banqueros. wearing their nice uh, suits and ties, working for banks Pero todo tiene su who generate wealth. Y yeah. ahora lo but uh, now I see the human side of it and I understand it much better. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you very much.